I'm Owen Bigland. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, viewer mailbag here. I had several people uh, kind of ask me a very similar question over the last two or three months. And so I want to address it on my blog here. Um, and I, it's a question that I get from quite a few people as well. They ask me, Owen, how do you determine a good strata from a bad strata? Where do you put your clients? What's the difference between what you would consider to be a good building, a good strata, and what you talk about on your blog being the dog units and the ones to avoid? And the other question was, they always ask me, you know, what is your purchase schedule? Uh, do you buy uh, investment units uh, when the market timing is right, or do you systematically buy? So let me answer both those here. So as far as good stratas versus bad stratas, this is what I would say on, on that. Um, as people know, I've been in Vancouver real estate for over 30 years. So, you know, I start cut my teeth in Richmond. That's where I started out. And then about nine years ago, I slowly started moving almost all my business now and concentrating in Vancouver. Downtown Vancouver condos and the surrounding areas, Mount Pleasant, Kitsilano, Fairview, Canby Corridor. Uh, I do still do a, f a fair bit of business in Richmond, uh, and I do some business in Burnaby and New Westminster. Outside of those areas, though, if someone's looking to buy or sell, usually I will refer them to, to a, an experienced realtor like myself that knows those areas much better than I do. Now, as far as, let's talk about downtown condos. The, how I know, before, first off, I, as people know, I deal with a lot of investment clients. That's kind of my bread and butter business that I've been doing for a long time because I've been an investor for close to 35 years in Vancouver condos. So I, I represent a lot of buyers. I probably sell on average two, maybe even three condos uh, a month in the downtown core right now. Um, and so what I've done over the last decade or so is I have built a database and this is proprietary to me. I'm not going to give away my secrets and I'm not going to name off buildings because I put a decade's worth of work into this database. But over the years I've been in, I can't say I've been in anywhere near all the stratas in downtown, but I think uh, I've definitely been in all the good ones. And over the years, I've toured these, I've listed properties in there, or I've sold, uh, represented the buyer on these. So I've built up a database. So when someone comes to me and says, oh, and I wanna buy an investment condo, the first thing my wife and I do is pull out our database, and I probably on there have about 15, 18, what I call my grade A buildings. And generally these uh, have one bedrooms in them. Some of them are boutique buildings, maybe 30, 40 units. Some of them are a little bit larger but they generally have good quality one bedroom. Some of them might be smaller bed one bedrooms, 500 and something square feet. Some of them might be more of a full size one bed, close to 700. It all depends on my investor or my buyer, if it's a principal residence buyer, what their budget is. So the first thing I do is I go to my preferred buildings list and see if anything is for sale. Generally, I've got a pretty good working knowledge anyways of what's currently on the market that I like. And when we do have that uh, comes up, then we will send the listings to the client and schedule some showings. Now, again, this has just come from years and years of experience of actually touring all these buildings and also reading all the strata documents, getting the engineer and depreciation reports. I'll tell you, when I first started working the downtown market, let's say actively uh, seven, eight years ago, you know, I uh, was still building my database at that time and I was willing to take on any clients that wanted to look at downtown condos. I didn't care if they had no hope of buying from me at that point because really what I was looking to do was to tour these units and start to develop my database, which is what I would do. They wanted a one bedroom, their budget was 500K. Great, let's go look at four today. Let's go look at another four next week. And what that allowed me to do was A, get a fantastic tour from the listing realtor have that listing realtor tell me all about the building, uh, show me the parking space, show me the rec center, show me the gym, everything. And I would slowly start putting together a database. I would go back to my office and say, well, that building on Hornby, uh, it didn't meet my criteria in a number of ways. I'm going to scratch that one. The one that I saw though on Homer Street, I really liked. I'm gonna put that one in my database and do a little bit more research on it. Maybe get some strata docs, start reading through them. So this was a fairly timely and long time, uh, it took me a while to build this database. And that's what you're paying for when you hire a realtor. This is what you're getting. Uh, you're getting 10, 15, 20 years of expertise. And it's something that you can't learn overnight. It just takes time. You know, 
the real estate business, as a lot of people probably realize, follows that 80 uh, 80 20 rule, uh, or sorry, 80 10 rule, where the top 10% of the realtors, of which I am one, uh, do 80% of the business. That's just the way this business is. I think most sales businesses are like that, where the top 5 or 10% are getting the lion's share of the business. And to get to that top 10 or 5% where I am, it takes time. It doesn't come overnight. It takes years and years of work and developing uh, the knowledge that you're going to need to become an expert, which I consider myself to be, especially in downtown condos and the surrounding area and as far as investment units go. So it just takes years and years of experience of being in these buildings. But you know how you can tell a good strata from a bad strata when you're working with a realtor, the, f the first thing is you're going to want to read the strata documents. The last two AGMs and you want to get an engineer's report or a depreciation report. That's going to tell you pretty much everything you're going to need to know about that building. It's going to be in those reports. Getting a home inspection is great too. Uh, home inspections though on condos, they're good to, to get if you can get one. Um, but for the most part, they're pretty superficial. You know, they're going to run the appliances, put a moisture probe in the shower. Um, they generally never have access to the roof or the mechanical room because of insurance liability. So they're somewhat superficial, but they're always good to get. It depends on the age of the building though. If it's a three-year-old condo, still under warranty, you know, if the documents all look pretty good, you may not want to spend the $400 on a home inspection. It's at the buyer's discretion. But those are the things you want to look for. Now, of course, there's obvious things too that I've talked about many times, and that's location, location, location. When you're buying real estate, it all starts with location. You want to be buying first off a, a property that is in a neighborhood and an area that you like. If you've got doubts about it, then keep looking. It's probably not the right unit for you. And in this market right now, we're not in a hot seller's market. We're in a more balanced market. You've got a little bit more time and you can be patient. So. Time is on the buyer's side now, which we haven't had for about four years. The second thing though that I always tell my clients to is what is the noise level in that unit? Be very careful of units that are hugging up on bridges, on busy streets, busy intersections. Even those, if those are investment units, you're not going to live in them. Your tenancy turnover will suffer. It will. So if people have been watching my blog for a long time know that I'm a big believer in paying a little bit more and buying the best. And in some cases, paying 10% more gets you 30 or 40% more unit. So those are the kind of things you wanna look, look for. But you know, it takes time to develop this. And this is a proprietary thing with me. Uh, if, again, I've said it a few times before, if you're looking to buy an investment unit in downtown Vancouver, you better interview a few realtors and hire a pro. Hire a realtor who works with investment properties, knows the downtown market inside and out, knows the stratas, has already sold in a lot of those stratas, and is privy to a lot of the documents. Because I can tell you, when I go into the MLS and look for a one bedroom, this isn't an exaggeration. Probably at least 50 to 60% of the buildings I have no interest in. Now it doesn't mean these units, these buildings are dogs or they're horrible, I would never buy in there some of them might be okay. It's just that there's better stuff out there. So why even waste your time with these 60 or 70%? I want the good ones. It's taken me 10 years to cultivate that, but there's always gonna be a good quality one bedroom come up in one of my preferred buildings. We might have to wait a week, two weeks, a month. That's the thing with a lot of these buildings, the good ones, there isn't, some, especially some of these boutique buildings, you might get one or two uh, units for sale a year. In some of the bigger ones, you might get four or five that might come up in a year. So sometimes it can be a waiting game, but I would probably easily eliminate 60% of the downtown condos right now. I just, I know the buildings and I'm just not interested in them for whatever reason. Location, age, maybe the strata is not being run very well, poor construction quality. You know, I do have a few developers, builders that I'm a little wary of. I'm never going to tell you here lie, uh, on, on tape here what they are, but there's a few developers that eh, I'm a little suspect of. The build quality, the finishings, that kind of thing. I've seen how they age over the years. So these are just things that experienced realtors like myself will give you if you're looking to buy a, a downtown Vancouver condo or an investment unit. And as far as investment units goes, well, I've talked about it my, before. My wife, who's a licensed realtor, she is my expert 
on uh, studying what the rental rates are. And uh, I would quickly give all my clients an assessment on what that unit would rent for unfurnished on a one-year lease. And we update that every three or four months so that, uh, so that my clients always know what the rental potential is on these. Or, uh, and the other thing is with my investor clients, if they want to manage it themselves, that's something that I offer them. I will sit down with them for an hour and a half before the deal closes. I will give them all my strata, all my rental docs, uh, tenancy agreements, tenancy applications, form K, uh, check-ins, uh, vacancy check-ins and checkouts, uh, how to run a credit check, all that. I would say most of my clients now, first time investors want to take it on themselves. Um, saves them some money and it's, you know, good education and it's not as tough as people think. For some of my clients though, maybe 20%, I'll refer them to one of my preferred property managers and for an 8% fee, they'll run it for you and you don't have to worry about anything and they'll send you the checks. So the other thing, final thing is how do I buy investment properties? Well, I systematically buy. I don't really time markets if it's a buyer's market, seller's market or balance market. I tend to, over the last 30 years, just kind of systematically buy. Once I've got enough down payment funds, the right unit comes up and I've got the money to go, I generally pull the trigger. The last one I did was what, two and a half years ago, I blogged about it. Uh, I bought uh, some units in Olympic Village. Um, I'm probably on the hunt again in 2019 for another unit. I probably would have bought last year, but I've told people I had to do an extensive renovation on my principal residence and that was my money for my next purchase. But I kind of systematically buy and that's probably the way that most of my seasoned investor clients, my longtime investor clients do it as well. They tend to call me every two, three years, send me an email and say, oh, and can you start looking for another one bed? And they just systematically buy them, put a tenant in them, let the tenant do the heavy lifting. They're not too concerned if the market drops 5% next year, either should you, whether it's an investment or a principal residence, you guys know how I feel about that. Markets go up and down, uh, but systematically buy it, hold it, have a look at it in 20 or 25 years, you're going to do fantastic. I'm Owen Bigwine. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.